Hey, what's up guys? It's Covert Gold here and in today's video, I'm going to be doing something slightly different than usual, okay? I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build. There will be no coding in this video, but I am going to teach you guys how to build without external software in Roblox. So the first thing you need to learn about is parts. So just go to view, actually, yeah, yeah, go to view and make sure you can view the explorer properties and go to model and make sure you can actually view the insert objects tab, okay? Drag a part into your game. This is the building block for all of the games that you see. There are all parts, okay? These parts can be manipulated, uh, stretched, uh, resized, etc. You know, like, like they can be actually moved around in certain ways to actually make up a bigger object. Think of this as a huge puzzle and these are just the little pieces that make up the puzzle, okay? So the way you go around actually manipulating this is you have these default Roblox tools here, you just go to home and you have these tools here. You have the scale tool, which actually, um, you know, resizes the, the object, okay? You have the move tool, which actually moves the object in the X, Y and Z directions, okay? You also have the rotate tool, which again rotates the part according to like rotation you want. Now you can always adjust the, uh, you know, the increments that you actually want to rotate or move these uh, these parts by. So if you go to the model tab, you have the rotate um, little section here. This is how many degrees I will be rotating when I whenever I just slide this around. Okay, I'm currently rotating this by around one degree. So if I want to make this a bit more accurate, I'll make that 45. And as you guys, as you guys can see, um, it will automatically rotate that by how much I want it to rotate that by. Ideally, you would not start with 1%. I just prefer 1% because it's like, you know, it gives me more flexibility to work with stuff. But um, ideally, make sure this is like 15. Um, and this would be 0.25, like my suggestion for you guys, 0.25 and 15 degrees when you're just starting out. And then as you get more, um, you know, as you get better with building, then I would suggest, you know, uh, decreasing these to make finer adjustments. Now, something most builders overlook is anchoring your stuff. So if you click on this um, and go to the properties tab and scroll down, you can see that it's not anchored. So let me just move this up, okay? If I test play, this is what's gonna happen whenever someone joins your game, look at this it's gonna fall on the ground and you don't want your builds to fall apart right so always anchor so just go to um click on the part and just click anchor up here or you can also do that from go to the properties tab and clicking on the anchored uh, sort of toggle button there okay another thing that builders can utilize is something called can collide it's a property okay so if i want this part here to be i don't know let's just resize this change the material to uh, grass or something I don't know and if I want this to be like a door or something for example like a portal and I want people to actually be able to walk through this I would toggle the can collide property off okay that means that if I play right here and I decide that I want to walk through this I can actually walk through this if it has can collide um, through that that means that I can't do this okay so if you want to make something which you can walk through then set can collide false Another thing which is a builder's best friend guys is the coloring and material palettes, okay? So if you just click on the part, you can see that you can actually modify the material and the brick color or the color of the, you know, the actual object itself, okay? So if I want to make this like uh, like a corroded metal, metal material, um, then I just do that, you know, just change the material. If I'm going for a sort of steampunk, or like, you know, post-war type of build, I would probably use this material for some things. If I want to make this black, for example, then I just change the color to black. And if you want to sort of add a bit of um, like a more personified, personal, you know, touch or whatever to your game, you can always use this color tool here Click on this uh, sort of box. And you can actually see that you can choose a huge array of colors here, okay? So just, Play around with this you can make some really beautiful looking things just with these two things okay now when you're building always always use reference dummies 
Now, you might be thinking, hey, Covert Code, what are reference dummies? Reference dummies are basically um, these things. So go to plugins, ignore the um, large amount of plugins that I have. You should have the, uh, where is it? Uh, this plugin right here, you should have this, okay? Click on the build rig and just click on R6 and click block rig. So this is your reference dummy, okay? So whenever you're building something, say you're building a door, if you don't have a reference dummy, you don't know how big that door should be for the actual humanoid to be able to fit through that door, you know? Um, so always use the reference dummy to make sure your builds are actually, you know, um, scaled correctly. There's nothing worse than actually finishing a build and realizing that you scaled it, um, like, incorrectly. It's happened to me. It sucks. Don't do that. Um, another thing which helps a ton, especially if you're not too creative or you're just starting out, is using is using um, reference photos, okay? So if you just go on Google and search up, I don't know, uh, house, game house or something, um, you'll come across images which, I mean, the, the purpose of searching up things like that is to inspire you. So if you see a door which you really like, you could base your Roblox door on that door, you know? So if you don't have much ideas, then just Google search, Google search, Google search. It's your best friend when building. Um, you can even create a decal like this and upload your own custom sort of uh, reference photo just to have it besides your build. But you don't need to do that. Google works just fine. Um, so yeah, just use reference photos. It will help you improve a ton. Another thing which builders use, guys, is textures, okay? So if you've been to, uh, you know, if you played simulator games, you've seen that the floor usually has like a sort of texture, like checkers or, I don't know, circles or something. So let's say we're making grass or something. Uh, so let's just resize this. Imagine this is our entire base plate, okay? By the way, this is the base plate. This entire, uh, like, gray block which spawns by default. Okay, that's the base plate. So imagine we want to make this Sort of a nice grass looking type of thing you would go to images in your toolbox from the insert objects tab just insert a texture and just drag that and point that at the part okay and let's just search up grass in the images let's see what comes up now if i scroll down try and pick a grass texture which i like I mean, i don't hate this so let's just use this let me just drag that right there actually you don't have to do this so just right click and copy asset ID, click on the texture and paste that inside of this box. Okay, as you guys can see, you've got your little grass texture there. Now it doesn't look that great, so that we're gonna increase the studs per tile U and V. So five or 10 studs. As you guys can see, that's sort of stretching it out in the U direction, okay? So let's make that a 15 and let's also make this 15. And as you guys can see, the texture has gotten larger now. Okay, um, if I want to make this transparent, you ideally would, you'd do something like this. Now, let's just change this back to smooth plastic and make that a nice green color right there. And there you guys go. You've got a sort of grass texture for your games. If you think that that's a bit too strong, then um, increase the transparency and you'll have something like this. It's nice, it's not too plain, you know, um, sometimes having something too plain doesn't look nice, so you add textures to it, okay? So that's how you use textures. Another thing, guys, another huge thing, um, probably the biggest thing I think and I'm gonna mention here is unioning. So let me just anchor this new part. Um, so unioning allows you to make complex shapes without actually using external software like Blender. So let's say I have this cylinder here, let's make this shape cylinder here, rotate this. So I'm using the R and T key, um, key binds on my keyboard, okay? Um, and, you know, let's just scale this, make this something like that. Make a trash can, you know, make this black. Uh, let's see. Use metal, black, copy, okay? Paste while clicking on this, okay? Actually, double click and paste so that, so that um, you know, it will spawn right on top of that. And, and just shift and hold this down, okay? And as you guys can see, uh, you know, you've decreased that, okay? Now let's move this to the center. Okay, actually I'm working with those offset that I gave you guys. So in this case, you would decrease this to 0 0.1, for example. 
because you need more, um, you know, more flexibility. We want to move that to the center right there. Okay, let me just paste that in. That that automatically centers that. So just delete, Control X, a double tap on that, paste, Control V. You know, there you go. Now let's lower this down. Okay, not all the way, and let's right click and negate. So you guys can see now that it's transparent and it's called ne negative part. Okay, so if I um, if I click on this, so shift, click on that, so it's selected, and shift, click on that, and so they're both selected, and I right click union, you guys can see that it sort of, um, sort of carved out the area where the negative part was, so that's how you use, uh, unions for the most part, um, if you want to combine two parts, so like this, so shift again, click, uh, union, you guys can see that now it's treated like one sort of whole part, okay? Um, if I want to sort of have a hole go through this, I'll just drag that around like that, and I'll shift again, click, union, there you go, there's a hole through the, um, the shape now, okay? So that's how you use unions. You would use unions in cases like uh, rooftops or, I don't know, just places where it would be inconvenient to just use parts, okay? Um, Limit the amount of unions you guys use. Uh, they're very useful, but they can hurt. Um, they can hurt your game's performance. Um, so they're a handy tool to have. Just don't use too much. Um, but yeah. Now the final thing I have for you guys is plugins. Now there are a ton of plugins out there, which can help you guys actually build better. Okay. Uh, be careful because most of them nowadays have some sort of. Um, so, uh, let's say quote-unquote virus it's not a virus but whatever um, just be careful what plugins you guys actually install into your games okay I would suggest studio build suits and Archimedes plugins okay that's what I suggest uh, you could also download the model resize plugin all of these will be in the description below so if you guys want to just go uh, like grab those and start building they're available okay but basically uh, studio build suit uh, essentially it's like the default Roblox tools, but better, I guess. Uh, so like this, you guys can see you got move object, move first, resize center like that. You know, it's pretty handy. Um, if you guys want to see how I actually use these, um, go watch my video where I build a house in 12 minutes. You can see me just using these tools in action. Um, Archimedes plugin allows you to like sort of um, do circles around like with things, I guess, not really circles. You don't have to do circles, but if I render once, you guys can see that I made a perfect circle uh, without any sort of flaws, you know? Um, that's pretty handy. Uh, the model resize plugin, uh, if I have a model like this, or actually, let's just insert a car, okay? Uh, if I have a Lamborghini, for example, or something like that, I just go to mod um, the plugins, toggle handles, and Resize this, it's, your, it's gonna scale your model up perfectly. Scale it down, pretty good, pretty handy. Uh, so yeah, those are the plugins that I recommend. Just, you know, it's it's down to personal preference um, when it comes down to what plugins you actually use. Um, and don't worry if you're not too good with plugins at first. Um, you know, it takes time to get used to the entire process. But with practice, guys, you will get way, way better, okay? Now, just as a bonus clip, I'm just going to include myself building, um, you know, something. I'm probably going to build a kitchen or something like that. So I'm just going to roll the time lapse now and I'll see you guys at the end.
Okay guys, so after 10 minutes of trying to build a kitchen, this is where I've got to. Now, it's not the best, it's pretty barren in my opinion, you know, this entire corner here is empty. But if I had more time, I would obviously, you know, fill up more. I would add more meshes around to make this look like actual kitchen, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much a kitchen, um, you know, or, <laughs> you know, um, an attempt at one. Um, but yeah, if I had more time, definitely would have made this better. Um, so yeah, guys, that's how to build. Um, like, subscribe, leave suggestions in the comments down below about what I should do next. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.